Welcome back. Uh, so in the last part of this video series, uh, what we're going to be covering is ionic loading. But first, because I went a little over my time in the last video, I'm just going to finish up what I was talking about last time. So with the token, as I mentioned, it's a 32 character random string. If you want it to be more or less than 32 characters, all you need to change is the first 32 and the second 32 to however many characters you want it to be, and it'll create the string that long. So one last thing I want to show you before we move on with uh, resolves as well is once the is logged in function is passed back, uh, we're going to take a quick look in the menu. And I'm just going to show you how I set it up so that when a user is logged in, it shows certain commands, and when they're not, it doesn't. So I'm just doing that using ng-hide and ng-show. And all I'm doing is I'm applying it to the logged in function, which if you remember in the controller, is what we set our function return or our value return from the resolve to. Uh, or we set that to the value return from the resolve. So that's all I wanted to really say about resolves. We're going to cover this in class next week. So if you don't entirely grasp it, that's fine. Um, but just let me know what it is that you guys don't aren't exactly getting with it. OK, let's go into ionic loading. So ionic loading is uh, something that's already included with ionic. So you don't have to install anything else. And what it does is it creates uh, some nice loading screens if you're, say, reaching out to the API to make a call. And it's going to take a little bit of time. So let's see this in action right quickly here. So I'm going to open up the app. And I am already logged in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a to-do here. So the to-do is going to be test to-do. I do not care that I'm not spelling it correctly. The address is going to be my place. And the price, we're going to make this one $500, OK? So now when I click the Add To-Do button, you're going to see a loading screen, not only when the to-do is being added, but also when we go back to the previous screen and the new to-dos are being loaded. Uh, keep in mind this is a local version, so it's going to kind of flash, but you'll notice it'll be up for a little longer if you're reaching out to the internet for your information. So I'm going to click Add To Do, and you notice that there right quickly. Um, so one other thing is you're also able to set a custom message in here. So you don't necessarily need it to always say loading or please wait. Uh, you can customize your message. So you can find information on Ionic Loading at ionicframework.com slash docs slash API slash service slash dollar sign Ionic Loading. And let's take a quick look at the code and see how I'm using this. So we're going to jump into my controller, and I'm going to show you it in my to-do function. So I actually have it in two functions right now. I have it when I load my to-dos, and I also have it when I'm adding a new to-do. So uh, the way this works is when the controller is first loaded, uh, it sets, it starts the ionic loading screen with the loading to do's message. That's going to be the message that's in the little label in the center. Now, you can set that message to be whatever you want through there. Um, so I would make it something a little more intuitive to what you're using. Now, one other thing to note is the ionic loading screen will stay up until you tell it to go down. So if you don't hide the ionic loading screen, it's going to stay up until they close their app. So let's see how I use this. So when I load my to-dos, I start up the loading screen. I perform my call to my API, localhost 8080 slash API slash to-dos, wait for that to return. And once it returns, whether it's an error or it's correct, uh, what I do in the correct state is I update the to-dos list with the return data, and then I hide the ionic loading screen. Uh, likewise, with the function, with the error function, I I show the error message, and then I hide the loading screen. So similarly, if we add a to-do, uh, once the add to-do button is clicked, we bring up the loading screen, we perform our call to our API, and then upon successful completion and updating of values, we go back to the main to-do screen, and we get rid of our ionic loading screen. Likewise, with the error, it's the same deal. So ionic loading is something that's pretty simple and straightforward. And it can really add a lot to the workflow of your, of your app. So I would strongly suggest you use it and read up the documentation on it. Um, if you have any questions on any of this stuff, please let me know. I hope that this tutorial has helped you. Uh, likewise, I can be reached at my, through my Slack, or I can be reached at rob at uitstartup.com. Uh, happy coding, and I hope this works well for you guys.